Hi everybody, it's Dr. Fletcher. Thanks for checking out this video. We're going to talk today a little bit about how to uh, run a flipped class lesson plan. So we want to figure out how do we actually build one of these lessons? What are the steps we should take when we're thinking about designing lessons uh, for today's classroom? So um, hang on, we're going to go fairly quickly through this, but I want to give you some of the basics for the worksheet that you're going to have to fill out um, regarding this topic. So follow along and uh, we'll see what we can do to, to make it more clear for you, okay? Um, all right, so the first thing I want you to look at is this diagram on the front page. You can see that there are three areas of instruction. There's before the class, there's during the class, and there's after the class. So what I want you to consider are what are the kids going to be doing before the class, what are they doing during the class, and what's going to happen after the class. This is the micro teach 4 that you're going to be working on. And obviously you're going to prepare ahead of time something for them to do outside of the class, prepare them for the activities that you do in the class, which hopefully will be practicing some key conceptual understanding, giving them some feedback on that, and then giving them another task to think about for an extension activity or an evaluation activity to check their understanding after they've gone through your lesson. So this is a bigger lesson than just thinking about a one-shot deal like MicroTeach 3 was, okay? All right, let's move into the content. So there are um, a number of steps to consider and a number of topics to consider when we think about how to build these um, types of lessons, right? The first question to ask yourself is what's the scope? Am I looking at a discrete one day lesson that is um, what we might call a fine grain size? Or am I looking at a big unit plan that has six weeks of instruction, which we would consider a large grain size lesson? So when we think about small versus large, we're thinking about um, the scope of the lesson. So um, for MicroTeach 4, typically you're within a larger boulder, but the lesson itself is small, right? So these are just things to consider when you're putting your plan together. When you start the writing of your lesson, the things that you first want to consider uh, are what are the objectives? What do you want the students to, to know and be able to do as a result of this lesson? And what are the outcomes? What are the behaviors or the activities or the um, skills and knowledge that you're going to expect to be able to measure from the teaching that you do, right? And finally, uh, what approach are you going to use? What instructional approach are you going to use during the classroom space time to um, get to practice those key conceptual understandings that you want them to walk away with from the lesson, right? So we want to think about grain size. We want to think about objectives and outcomes, and we want to think about instructional approaches. Do we want to do whole group? Do we want to do small group and small learning activities? If you're going to be teaching the whole period, you're probably going to want to have a variety of activities where sometimes they're working in groups, sometimes they might be working alone, and there might be parts of the class where you're actually working with them and talking to them as a whole class, as a discussion or a lecture. Okay. Okay, the next thing that we want to consider is how do we help them before class starts with gaining familiarity with the new material, right? So this is where the flipped part in the technology comes in. So I've outlined four different ways that you can consider looking at um, the flipped lesson part of this, which is the, the pre-lesson part, right? So you could um, do a screencast, and a screencast is where you have a variety of different types of multimedia that you drag around a screen. Um, you might um, solve some problems with them if it's a math class to help them to model what, it, what good solving, math solving might look like. Uh, you might have some text and, and if you're helping them to learn how to read, you might have some um, text that you're following along with and you're highlighting the text as you read it so, and, or you're showing them how to take notes. Or in a history class you might have some primary sources like a, a, a historical um, political cartoon that you are talking about and drawing on and, and annotating as you discuss it to help them understand the importance of it as a model. Right? Video lecturing is just what it sounds like. It would be like having your favorite professor lecture to you, uh, but it's videotaped. So there's a camera set up and basically you are doing a traditional lecture with the camera aiming at you. Right. Um, you can also do like a presentation, like a PowerPoint, and just have it um, a voiceover like this, like me speaking without a, without a video camera, but just the voiceover going over the PowerPoint presentation. 
And then a fourth way that you could consider it would be through podcasting, and that's by creating an audio file that has different sounds and different types of um, engaging ways that you introduce the students to the topic. So it might be like an old-time radio show. You might do uh, um, a, um, something where you're recording sounds from a, a different setting so that they understand what the setting is. You might tell a story and that podcast, sometimes the audio version of that can be an easy way for you to engage students in the content. Right? So those are some ideas for ways that you can um, get students' attention, familiarize them with the content before the class starts. The third thing to consider is how are you going to motivate students to prepare for class. So uh, we want them to be able to bring a product in or some evidence, show some evidence that they've learned something or that they've paid attention to our pre-activity outside of classroom activity. And so we should consider what are the types of activities that we can ask students to do that will that'll motivate them to complete them and prepare them for the class. Um, what types of questions can you ask students? Uh, in your pre-lesson portion of the lesson? And what should they be able to do to prepare? So what should students have to do to prepare for the lesson plan? Uh, one model um, called just-in-time teaching uses some ideas like having warm-up questions that are related to the pre-class reading that are conceptually based, where students have um, basically an online Google form or something like that that they can fill out or uh, Quizlet or Socrative or any of the apps that allow them to provide answers to you. They can create a, um, they can write their responses down before they come into class and then you can look at those and build the class around the answers that they gave you as they were starting. Right? So what that does, if you get a whole bunch of answers from kids before the class starts, you have an idea of their misconceptions you have an idea of the types of things that they're thinking about the content um, before they walk in. So you can modify or prepare the class and be flexible to their interests and needs by capturing that information ahead of time. Right? Uh, you can also create puzzles for them that are fun and engaging. Uh, you could do some other online type game activities or quizzes that are online. You could have them uh, play like uh, online Jeopardy games related to content or, or vocabulary. You could have them use a Vine um, thread. Vine is a type of video technology where students can leave very short answers or um, voice thread, for example. Other ways that they can leave feedback so that you can and they can understand and think about the content before the class starts. Okay, so let's say that you've got that done and they've all provided you with some feedback. The next thing to think about is what types of in-class activities are you going to provide for them that will deepen their understanding, right? So uh, we want to consider how do we uh, prepare clear instructions for students? How do we prepare a logical sequence of events during the class time that gives them an opportunity to explore the conceptual and apply the conceptual understanding that we've started them off engaging them in before class starts, right? So in the 5e lesson plan, this might be the explore and the explain part of that. Remember it was engage, explore, explain, extend, and then evaluate kind of is threaded throughout. So the engage might be that pre-activity, the explore and the explain might happen during your class period where they're exploring the concept by grappling with some idea concretely, and then they and you are trying to explain it and you're helping guide them to a better understanding of the content, okay? And then the extend would be happening outside after class was over, right? You'd give them an, an extra piece to do that would help them extend their thinking, right? You could be evaluating them at all times during that. I'm gonna ask you to provide a timeline during the class of what you're gonna be doing, what the students are gonna be doing, and um, asking you to think of some question stems and what you'll be saying and doing, what they'll be saying and doing, that kind of thing, okay? So the extension, right? So after they're in the class and you've left, um, it's nice to leave the teacher with something to check for understanding for the end of the week or for some out, another type of activity out, outside there. So you um, would want to be considering how does this fit in the scope and sequence of the whole unit that they're doing? What would be a good time to check for understanding of the learning that they did in the classroom? And how can you relate what they did today to the future? And so I've posted a picture of a teacher's calendar 
and a kid outside catching a frog and maybe he was in a class an environmental science class where they talked about where frogs live and so he went out and looked for one and caught one as a as an extension to that activity the final um, the final piece is to consider uh, how are you going to evaluate and assess the students and so we know that uh, formative assessment is always supposed to be happening in the classroom and that can happen through um, questioning or oral oral language um, students communicating clearly um, students can write for you and they can allow you to see their writing and see if they have some understanding from that you can give them small tasks to do uh, you can give them quizzes and things like that as well uh, we always want to try and use a rubric to guide our um, our assessments so especially if they're formal assessments um, so that the students know what's expected of them right and uh, you can also consider summative assessments and I've just posted a picture of uh, what a proficient uh, portfolio might look like for a student if it was a long project so remember that the, the performance assessments are one type of sort of a alternative assessment to a test or a quiz that you're looking for some authentic learning that's happening so the task that I have for you to do is, um, is to consider the topic and the content of your teacher and fill out a worksheet that answers these themes and these steps and, uh, and then a lesson plan template that um, is going to follow along with that. So I will provide those materials for you and um, we'll go over a rough draft of one to see kind of what they look like. Okay. All right. Thank you.